Holy cow! It, it breaks apart like on bike. Good afternoon. It's actually looking more like uh, late afternoon now. We are on our way to a restaurant and we are walking along the Akihabara streets but we're not exploring Akihabara today. Anyway, we have this general rule where we generally do not film anything at night because under extreme low light situations, it introduces a lot of noise on the image. You know those tiny grainy dot things? Yeah, that's noise and I think it's pretty unsavory. But today we are breaking our rule for this restaurant because they only open at night. And this restaurant serves one of the most important Japanese dishes that I love. And it's called sukiyaki, which means beef in a sweet sauce-based hot pot. It has a history of more than 140 years, and I think many tell that it is the best sukiyaki restaurant in Tokyo. So, let's head to the restaurant now. Ishibashi, this building right behind me. And it looks like a rather historical building. Just look at the exterior of this aged design. And I think you would have guessed we are a little early for our appointment today. They are not open yet. Let's hope they open soon so that we can get in because it's quite cold and windy outside. I can't wait to show you what their sukiyaki looks like. And I can't wait to show me what their sukiyaki looks like. Here we are in the room. It looks like a really old fashioned room, like Ryokan in a way, and you're in this tiny area. And the Nakai is just dressed in this. I'm sorry, I don't know the types. It's like, I think it's a kimono. <laughs> and we are seated at this table. It's really just, you know, everything looks so well aged, and it looks like there's a lot of history behind it. And behind me are some of these ornaments. My mom had one of those dolls. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Um, some sort of heater ornament thing and then we've got some shrines or something so it's got a really traditional setup and they have given us this hand towel uh, for you to sort of freshen up so let's quickly clean our hands I, I don't know if you're supposed to wipe your face with it um i guess you can okay i'm gonna roll it back nicely because this looks like a really um you know luxurious establishment <laughs> back it goes right by the way, we will try our best to make it as, um, you know, less messy as we can because the Nakai, uh, which is waitress in the sense of a uh, Ryokan, she will cook for us. So we're gonna have to chase the shots and we see what happens. But I'm really excited to try out. She's really friendly. Uh, we just have to make sure we don't film her face. Everything else should be fine. All right, we're starting the course with two appetizers. We've got some chicken over here. It's a cold dish. I think they are chicken fillet with sesame sauce with a sprinkle of sesame, some cucumber and some jellyfish up top. And on the other side, we've got grilled mackerel, saba, together with grated daikon. Up top, some form of vegetable, not too sure what it is. And I don't know if it's a berry or it's a really Really miniature tomato, I'm guessing berry, and a wedge of lemon. Let's start with the chicken first. Can't wait. It looks very nice. Okay, I'm gonna grab this piece of chicken here, maybe get a little bit of the cucumber to go with it, and some of that jellyfish. Nice. Okay, let's go. Mm. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so refreshing. The sesame heat. And then immediately you get the tang from the jellyfish. It's got a nice chewiness. The chicken is tender enough. It's got a firm chew to it. And the cucumber makes it very refreshing. It washes off the flavor of the sesame. Mm. This is a very good appetizer. Okay, let's move on to that fish. I'm gonna spread up, squeeze the lemon onto the fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. I... I'll try and break it down and maybe grab a piece of it if I can. Oh, this is quite a tough fish to break apart. I'm sorry guys, this is looking a little unsightly. But I did expect the skin to be this crispy. Oh no. Okay, this will have to do. This will have to do. 
Okay, let's go. Hmm. Hmm. Rather salty. Macro. Nicely cooked. Firm flesh. Crispy skin. Some oil fragrance. The lemon gives it the much needed hardness. I'm gonna try and grab a little bit more uh, with the daikon and that berry tomato thing and give it another go. <laughs> mm. Much better. Daikon brings out a saltiness. The macro feels slightly fermented. I might be mistaken, but it's got that umami to it. Still rather salty. And I still can't tell whether it's a tomato or berry because of the saltiness of the macro, but it pops in your mouth. That yeah. it's a very good mouthfeel, if I may. Mm. Very decent appetizer. I prefer the sesame chicken a lot more because that is a very simple, very straightforward flavor. All right, I think we are ready for the main course. Alright, the first piece is ready. Basically, we are just eating the beef slice together with some warishita, which is a mixture of soy sauce, sake, mirin, sugar, I think. And then it's dipped into this beaten egg. You can see how creamy the yolk is. Okay, let's go. It's a really huge piece. I don't know how I'm gonna. I'm just gonna bite into it. <laughs> Holy cow! It. It breaks apart. Like. On bite, but it's not like you know soft to the point where it falls apart. It has a nice bite to it, a very light chew, and the beefiness you can really taste it. Hmm. With a blanket of that nice creamy egg yolk, which carries its own innate flavor as well. That egginess. Oh, this is very good. It literally showcases how good this piece of beef is. Did I mention it's Kagoshima beef? I think I did. Yeah. Hey guys, because of the way this meal is done, I've decided to change my strategy. I'm filming the close-up, and Craig is going to film me while I explain what uh, the Nakai, the Kai Nakai is doing for us. So the first one we had just the beef, and now she is basically heating up the vegetables, the leeks, the tofu, in a little bit of the warishita, and the beef fat is still simmering in there. Looks really nice. I'm surprised by the way it's done here compared to how it's done in Malaysia because we are, our ingredients are swimming in soup and the others are just you know one thin layer of the sauce. So we have got this beautiful beef together with the leek. I'm going to try this again deep in this creamy egg sauce. Okay, let's go. Mm. Mm. The leek. It's punchy but not too punchy. It gives you a lift to that beef, which I found out is sirloin. I think it's a very brilliant move because if the beef is too fatty, it sort of gets overly oily. I think sirloin is a good cut because it's lean enough. The sauce, it's got a nice saltiness mixed in with a sweetness. It leans more savory than sweet. Mm. Mm. Again, the combination of everything. Just really good, the criminals of the egg. Oh my god. Mm. Alright, guys, the third plate is now beef with onions together with inuki mushrooms. So, I heard from uh, our Nakai Kayasan, she explained that apparently onions are quite rare, right? In, in Japan's sukiyaki, 
they are quite different from Malaysia and Singapore where we always see onions <laughs> so yeah apparently it's a very rare thing so I'm interested to try it out very excited oh look at that beef just bubbling oh oh two slices two slices you can never get too greedy with sukiyaki It's a little bit bitty, maybe. A little, little bit. It's very popular for um, sukiyaki or nabe. Well, I like. I, I just like to eat it rare as salad. <laughs> I like it. It's very thin. Popular for. So the third plate, two slices of beef, some inoki, and this is called shungiku. I'm gonna guess it's uh, maybe Chinese we call tongao. I'm not too sure, but we'll try it out. Let, let's just try the vegetable first. I wanna know. Mm. Mm. It's definitely tongao, but but it's a lot more bitter. It's got a bitterness of arugula without the spiciness. Leafy. Basically tongao lah. Chinese you know, it's tongao but a lot more bitterness to it. Very deep bitterness which I think will pair very well with the beef. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think it's better to just eat the vegetable on its own and you take a bite out of the beef. Because when you eat it together with the beef, I guess perhaps because the sauce, they sort of marinated the beef in a way. So you get mainly the flavor of the sauce and the flavor of the leaf. It's sort of lost in translation, so eat it separately. I'm gonna try the onions now. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Kaiya-san has cooked it really well. It is sort of, it's cooked. But you know when you cook down onions too much, it becomes just sweetness. And you lose the slight pungency of the onion but this has a very very mild pungency at the end and you can still hear the crunchiness this is cooked perfectly mm. very good all right guys this is the final slice of beef and it comes with all the ingredients you've got the usual vegetables the shinjiku the inoki mushroom leek there might be i'm not sure if there are onions underneath but you've got the beautiful tofu here together with that melty i hate to use the word melty because you know it's better than melty but that melty kagoshima beef which is the beef of the day apparently in ishibashi they choose whichever beef is the best for that day and today happens to be kagoshima beef so I think it's time for some montage. Our magical experience at Ishibashi is coming to an end. We are served with the final, our quite main course, which is a carp meal. Basically, when uh, we eat nabe, like hot pot, they end the hot pot with this thing called ojiya. They cook the remaining sauce with maybe udon or anything else. And in Ishibashi's case, they end the sukiyaki meal by cooking it with rice. Kaya-san starts with the remaining sauce on the pot. She removes the cow fat and then she puts in the beautiful bed of rice, so individual and so plump and fluffy, pours on a little bit more of warishita, and then she pours on this beaten, beautiful silky egg yolk, puts on the lid, and then we wait for a few minutes. When you start seeing the steam rise, that's when it's almost ready. She turns off the fire, waits for about 30 seconds, and you see this sort of like a rice omelette, if I may, and it smells heavenly. Look at this, you have got all these bits of caramelization over here. It's like a clay pot rice in a way, isn't it? And the egg is just soaked into the rice. I'm going to take a quick bite now. Mm. A very hearty feel. 
the bitterness from the charred rice and we've got the egginess, the sweetness from the Warishita. Mm. Very simple tasting. It's not something that is like truly magical. But it does end the meal well because you know you end with a carb, so it's nice after having so much beef. Mm. And the quality is just so good. Mm. We are almost done. I think we have a dessert, probably some fruits. We have four types of fruit apple, kiwi, pineapple, and orange. Let's go. is have a little bit soft with crunchiness and there's some um, grainy mm, good apple <laughs> mm. ありがとうございます。どうもありがとうございます。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。あり
We love it. Yeah. Mm. So I guess that's it for our food vlog for the week where some amazing sukiyaki. Mm -hmm. Hope you have enjoyed this experience with us. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Next week, we'll eat some other foods still in Tokyo, obviously. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye.